G'day guys, exciting news. Uh, Stuart Duncan from Titan Machinery has just sent me down this little TM25 mill to preview and uh, have a look at and give it a bit of a test for you guys out there in uh, YouTube land. Let's have a look at it. It's just arrived, just come off a truck. It's well, well boxed, as you can see here, as sent down. Probably had a 12 hour drive in a truck to get here. Uh, very sturdy box. Great big staples to keep uh, the lid in and everything like that. Let's just have a look. You can see it's uh, extremely well packed. It's uh, bagged to keep the moisture out. Looks like I can see a manual down the bottom there. Also looks like it's got a little bit of a chip tray that comes with it as well. Alrighty, I'll keep unpacking and I'll show you what I find next. Okay, I've just uh, pulled back the plastic cover over the milling machine. I've actually removed the four retaining bolts that were holding the mill down. Take a look at this. They were high tensile, grade 8.8. This mill was not, well, was never ever going to move in transit, that's for sure. Each bolt was uh, very well secured and tightened extremely well. Beaut it's a beautiful looking machine at first glance. I can't wait to get it out of the crate. Rightio, I've uh, nearly got it out of the crate. I've hooked it up, slinged it up on the forklift. Got to be really careful here I don't hit the roof. What I'm trying to do is just get the box out from underneath the machine. If we have a look what is she weighing at. Stuart did tell me the little mill weighs about 145 kilograms. But on the scale here, I'm getting about 360. But the thing is, you've got to remember, I'm actually, this is hydraulic. It's weighing off the hydraulic pressure. And no doubt it's adding the carriage up here as well. Alrighty, I'll keep playing because I'm on my own. I don't want to drop it on my head. Well, success, guys. I've got it off the forklift and onto the bench without killing myself. Thank God for that. Um, look, at first glance, this little mill is absolutely awesome. Just take a look at it. It uh, comes with a little tool kit. Just like the other mills, comes with a drill chuck, some spanners and screwdrivers, that sort of thing. I've put the chuck together on the R8 Arbor. But uh, what I think is the piece de resistance is when I lift up this tin, tin cover here, have a look at this. It comes factory fitted with a belt drive. No more noisy gears in the head here. No more stripped brass gears up top on the spindle motor. It is absolutely awesome. The other thing I'd like to point out, it comes wide, ready to go, Australian, 240 volt. No more need to cut off the Chinese plug and put your own uh, lead on and that sort of thing. It also comes with a 15 amp power point. Here we go, let's turn him on, let's have a listen. Oh, listen to that. It is so quiet, guys. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm not sure if this little GoPro gives this belt drive much justice, but I'll turn it up a little bit faster. Have a look at that. It's actually in low range at the moment and we're getting about uh, 1500 RPM or 1477 flat out in that little low speed. Nice big emergency stop, factory fitted. Look at that, forward and reverse. Absolutely awesome guy. What I'd like to point out, uh, the Stuart Duncan the owner of Titan Machinery in Australia, he, he actually goes back to the factory and talks to these guys building these little milling machines. And uh, he keeps his finger on the pulse and makes sure they upgrade it and it's to his specs. Uh, now, you don't get this with a lot of companies. Uh, like I said, Stuart's uh, not a very big company. It's a family-owned business. But have a look at this. He's even made him put a little drill hole in here in the spindle. I had to do that in my TM20 myself. And it's also pinned for the R8 collet when it goes up the arbor, when it goes up here, it actually locks and locates. And my original TM20 never did that. So Stuart is right on the, uh, got, you know, he's right onto it here. He's even made, produced a little manual that comes with it. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out, I love these milling machines here. So notice how they bolt vertically on the column. They, don't, um, they mount here on the horizontal plane where the other type, the grizzly type, mount on the back here with the four screws. This is more traditional like a real milling machine should mount. What I'll do now, I'll put the R8 in and let's do some test cutting. I've got the uh, drill chuck in here at the moment and please, I don't recommend anybody do any milling in a drill chuck. Always ensure you use a collet to hold your end mill. Um, I've left my R8 collet set at home. I don't have a set here in the workshop so I'll be using this drill chuck for this demonstration. I do not advocate to use a drill chuck to hold an end mill. End mill. Just remember that please. Alrighty, I've tapped off to the depth and length that I want. I'll start him up. 
And here we go. We've got about 500 RPM there on the spindle. Just going to feed it in slowly and just show you that Little Mill is capable of taking, cutting into uh, bright mild steel. This is a high speed steel end mill, 12 mil. Here we go. Conventional milling here at the moment. So we're back again, we're on the TM25 and with the little TM25 now we're going to do some drilling just to show you that it is quite a capable little machine. Um, I have just did some milling on this side, some conventional milling. Uh, remember what I said, never use a drill chuck to, put it, to hold an end mill. Drill chucks are for holding drills, uh, they're not designed to take that sideways end load and nine times out of ten you run the risk of loosening up the chuck on the R8 Arbor. Anyway, that being said, let's try the drilling out. by using a hand feed quill, a little bit of coolant. This is a 5mm high speed steel and um, drill bit. So 5mm diameter, high speed steel, it's a Sutton Tools drill bit. And uh, this is going through with, as you can see it's handling it very easily, it's quite comfortable. No problem at all. And there we go, all the way through. Okay, I'm going to reset it up and uh, try a 13mm drill bit through that now. Okay, back again. We've got the 13mm drill bit, high speed steel drill bit in the drill chuck. We've got the RPM up around 500. Probably a little bit quick. I could turn it down a little bit. Here we go. Let's see what she goes like. We'll drop the Z down. Uh, we'll use the quill for the drilling action. We'll just lock up the gib on the Z on the column. And here we go on the quill handle now with the 13mm drill bit. That is going through like butter. No problem at all. I can't even feel any pressure on the quill. Very capable little machine. Nearly through. A little bit more coolant. Yep, making chips and smoke, that's what we like. There we have it guys. Very capable little machine. Certainly gets my tick of approval. Sort of wish I waited now and uh, bought the TM25 instead of the TM20. However, I'm still happy with my TM20. It's uh, given me no problems whatsoever. Alrighty, well uh, look guys, stay tuned because I might demonstrate how to make some T-slot nuts uh, on this little machine and do a little DIY video. And not only that, I'll actually do a CNC conversion kit for this and show you how I do it. Uh, that will take place over, you know, over the next couple of months. Thanks again for watching guys.